Hi guys, right. So this is um, chapter five, part five. Part five. And this is, if you like, the more interesting um, matter here, that we're no longer talking about the one product. When we did one product, if you like, that was very much level four, <clears throat> very much kind of what is break even. If we're selling one product, we have a price of, I don't know, whatever, 50 pounds. We're selling it for 25. The contribution becomes 25. We have fixed cost of 25 grand. And therefore, in order to break even, we need to sell a thousand units. So this was very nice. But we know in reality, this is not the truth. So we're not just dealing with the one product. Many businesses sell a range of products. I like to use Greg's. They sell donuts. They sell sausage rolls. They sell um, they sell all kinds of things. <laughs> veggie, veggie burger, not veggie burgers, Oyen. They sell veggie patties, if you like. They sell veggie patties. They sell a range of things. However, as they sell a range of things, they cannot operate on the sort of how many units do we need to break even. They need to operate on the sort of what is break even revenue? What revenue do we need to hit, if you like, to break even? And that's the argument. That's the thinking. Um, now, on the one hand, if you look at it, you might want to, we cannot deny that different products bring in, if you like, different margins or different contributions. So again, we talked about this in earlier videos, we, we recognize that the more, and I'll show you an Excel spreadsheet, I tried showing it in class, but it didn't work, but I had a chance to, to redeem myself here um, because I can load up Excel which I struggled with in class the other day. So the, the issue here is that um, because we have a mix of products and these products come in different contribution sales margins, we need to think carefully about what would be, how we would arrive at the average contribution sales margin. It's not, it can't just be a matter of just adding up the individual C over S ratios of product one, C over S of product two, C over S of product three. No, because we're not selling one of each. If we're selling a lot of this one, then that will affect the average. So in effect, we're, we're trying to target what's referred to as a weighted average C over S ratio, in effect. In effect, that's where we're going. So um, what we must assume, if, if this is going to hold, is that this weight must apply at all times. You know, it, we can't be having a mix up. Uh, we, we can't be um, sort of changing the, the ratio of those products. So if you're selling um, one, four, five units of product A, that means you're selling, I don't know, 15 of product B, and that means you're selling, if you like, um, 20 of product C. So if you like, the ratio here is one to three to four. And so as we grow, if you like, whatever, 500, um, 1,500, and then, of course, 2,000. So that's the argument here. This is the, this um, if you like, <clears throat> stability in growth is what we're assuming with this sales mix. That's the, these are the assumptions that we have to make. Otherwise, our theories won't really make sense. So uh, the assumption has to be made that the sales mix remains constant, and this is defined as the relative proportion of each, if you like. And any changes, the key point is they all go up and down in the same, in the same way. And so this is what I was show, trying to show you. Um, I'll keep those. Let me just go to the um, to my Excel sheet. I was trying to show you here. Imagine you um, ran a restaurant, and you have um, this is the income from just the non-alcoholic drinks. By the way, this is what you typically would see when you're doing um, see your financial reporting if you're doing any interpretation, which, is mean, which means all good interpretation should be asking questions as in what is the breakdown of that um, technically gross profit margin, but I'm just using this as an example. So really, if we break down all final reporting is broken down, if you like, into individual products and how they are doing. And here we're selling alcohol, we're selling food, sorry, non-alcoholic drinks, and we're selling alcohol. So you can see here that alcohol brings in the greatest C over S ratio. We're able to buy a bottle or whatever it is for 20 pounds and sell it for 100 because people will pay anything <clears throat> when, they're, um, when they're drinking. And we can see that the margins are smaller on, on the other products. So on the one hand, if you were selling one of each, yeah, I mean, that would make sense, one one item each, then 
well, yes, that's a C over S ratio, the average. If you like, I mean, this is, that's the C over S there, that's the C over S there, that's the C over S there. I just add them all together, and this is my weighted, if you like, average. But look at what happens here. What I do now is I start selling them in different units. And this is, you can see here that the C over S ratio of 0 0.533 lies closer to, I'm selling, the most I'm selling, I'm selling non-alcoholic drinks. So you can see a C over S ratio weighted um, in this direction, if you like, close to 0 0.4. Let me show you, let me change this. Imagine I now decide to sell, imagine I end up selling 500 of these and 1,000. 500 of these. Look at what happens to my C over S ratio. So my weighted average increases because I'm selling, I'm now the one that has the greatest margin is contributing more to the overall average C over S ratio. So we must take into account, I put it in yellow, the number of units, if you like. We cannot just calculate the individual C over S ratio for one product. No, we must multiply that. In effect, we must find the total of all, if you like, the, um, <clears throat> because, like, again, like I highlight, um, the fact here is that contribution will increase much more by the product that is bringing the greatest contribution, if you like, to sales. So that's the issue here. It, it must be weighted, and we must consider the units when calculating these. So going back to my slides, um, this kind of brings us to... Um, I'm just kind of highlighting this as we see by selling the product with the highest C of S ratio. Yes, of course. So obviously, if we're selling alcohol first, again, I guess it goes without saying. If we're selling, um, if we're selling just alcohol first, I mean, it it will we will get the most. I mean, look at that. That's giving us a contribution of a hundred and twenty thousand. So if my fixed cost is, I don't know, 150000 it makes sense to sell as much of alcohol first, and then I can sell the others, if you could choose that way. I mean, this is rare. Most products are sold, like you see here, in combination. But the argument technically is that if I could, I would. Right? And that's kind of what this is. And that's kind of part of this analysis. It's sort of saying that, listen, in the previous videos, we talked about a profit um, <clears throat> volume curve where we can, if you like, um, show the relationship between profit and revenue. And what are we saying? That my aim here, if I can sell the first product really early and sell that quickly, you can see this is profit. My loss is falling. This is my fixed cost coming down and I'm getting there pretty quickly, quite steep, which means that I cover a lot of ground early with just a few units um, in terms of with my revenue. And that's my aim. I'm trying to to get to. I'm, just, I'm trying to come out of this loss, so to speak, because I have a fixed cost. I'm, just, I'm trying to cover my fixed cost ultimately. My next product won't be as steep because, of course, it's not bringing in as much contribution. Um, <clears throat> so I'll need more revenue to get to get closer. So at some point, I'll cross that point, and that's break even. Of course, we've discussed that before. Where profit is zero, um, and that's zero over there. But then, of course, my next product will then steep a bit more because, again, it's just not able to drive profit the way the others were. If you like, its revenue will only be generating much less profit as you go along. For every pound of revenue, you're not getting as much profit, if you like. <clears throat> Okay, great. So that's kind of why this is also important. And then ultimately what we've just been doing, this whole average weighted C over S ratio is really this thing over here. Let me find this sort of average line. If you like, over here. And that's your average C over S ratio, which is really the average of all these three, isn't it? But in effect, uh, that's one product one, product two, and product three. So here's an example. I think I can do all this in this one video. Um, here's an example where you're selling 50,000 units, you're selling 10,000 units, you're selling 100,000 units. Here, the selling price variable, um, selling variable, selling variable. We find the contribution. That's fine. We can find that. We know we have to cover um, our fixed overheads of 450,000, and we know this is a constant sales mix. So what do we do first? I'm going to find the total. Fundamentally, that's what I'm trying to do here. Find all the revenue of all the units. So I know I'm told it's 16 pound, 20 pound, and I'm selling 50,000 units, 10,000 units. So do all that. That's all your revenue from there. Add that all together. 
find your contribution, of course, which is literally contribution times the number of units, contribution times the number of units, contribute, add that all together, and you can see the individual C over S ratios here. But the average, of course, C over S ratio based on the number of units, so the weighted C over S ratio is 0 0.45. So this is my C over S ratio. Now you can get questions, so because like I told you, the ultimate aim here is the owner of the business wants to know how much revenue do I need to break even? Because he's selling a range of products. He's not selling one product. So now that he has this average C over S ratio, he can then sort of say, from what we've talked about before, if this is fixed cost, we know that at break even, fixed costs are equal to contribution. And C over S is equal to, if you like, in this case, 0 0.45. That's what we're told, right? That's the C over S ratio. And therefore, it means that 450 thousand over s is equal to 0 0.45 so in effect s is equal to 450,000 divided by 0 0.45 and that's what you see me do over here and I get a million pounds as my break-even revenue um, and we have discussed margin of safety um, already this in the previous exercise previous classes and we've discussed target profit as well um, I'm sure you remember from the past the problem with break-even analysis uh, fundamentally is these assumptions about I, I always refer to as the problem of one that you have one of everything one price one cost fixed costs aren't changing the external um, situation is very much stable you know it doesn't take into account any any shocks based so basically it doesn't if you carried out a pest analysis everything's wonderful very stable um, environment but we know that's not quite true you're constantly reacting if you like aren't you to the needs of your all the forces in your industry the external environment that sort of thing so uh, but it is a model and it of course can be adaptive all right awesome great stuff see you in the next video